Well, hello students. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to Jungkook Yongho Hui Hua. We're here today for our review week. So I thought about it a lot. I like to use the book and I like to teach you guys new things, but I thought this week, you know, I started to design the lesson about food because unit three in our book is about food and actually is one of my favorite chapters because I love to eat. However, um, I thought we should probably, you know, with all of my classes, we're doing a review and making sure you guys know what to expect on our class midterm, right? On our class midterm. So instead, I'm going to use most of the time today to uh, help you guys review and go over these things for the midterm. It's not going to be a very exciting lesson, I don't think, but it's make sure that you guys know what to do when it comes time to take the test, the midterm test, which should be happening this week, at the end of this week, as you are listening to this. Okay. All right. So I included those pictures of food because we were going to talk about food and, and, uh, well, you guys asked me in some of your emails what I'm doing these days. In these days, I'm preparing, trying to make Thai food. Do you like Thai food? Thai food is one of my favorite food in the world. Do you know what this is in the photo? What are the names of these foods? I think some of you have tried them. Well, on the left is pad thai. It's a kind of like a bokkumyeon, right? Like a fried noodles with like a peanut sauce and cilantro. This one has tofu in it. And on the other side, I have some delicious fresh spring rolls. I really love the fresh spring rolls more than a fried spring roll because um, they make me feel like kind of healthy when I eat them. I feel like I'm not fat, but I'm still satisfied. I don't like to eat them with like a plum sauce or some kind of spicy sauce. How about you guys? What are you eating these days now that you're stuck inside the house? Are you eating well? Yeah, I'm using Gukio, the delivery app, in, uh, but unfortunately I live in Songhan and there's not too many delicious restaurants that deliver food to Songhan, right? Unfortunately, that's the case, but what can we do, right? What can we do? Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Like I said, it's not going to be the most interesting lesson today, no time for games or anything, but I'm going to go over some, most of the things that are going to be on the test, not everything, but most of the things that are going to be on the test. It's up to you to look at the old videos, look at your old notes and check out the things that we've done in the book. I hope you did the review for unit two. I told you I wasn't going to check it, but if you have some questions about it, please send me a message or talk to me in the Zoom class. Okay. All right. So here I have another picture of my, if you had me before, you know my favorite fruit is a durian fruit. People are always complaining about durian, but I think it's quite delicious. It doesn't smell too bad to me, but some people are very sensitive to smells. Some people are very, very sensitive to smells. Any case, I'm just trying to color up our food chapter for today, but I wanted to tell you what is up for today. So today um, in our level one, we're going to be talking about the specifics of our midterm test. What can you expect from our midterm test? Uh, if you've had me before, you know about my, you know about my midterm. Uh, it's not too interesting. It's similar to the quiz, not not too different from the quiz. Um, for level two, we're going to talk. We're going to review a little bit from weeks one through five. We're going to review weeks one through five. So if you miss something from those weeks, you're going to have a chance to go over it again at least a little bit. Uh, we're going to check the quiz. I hope you guys have taken the quiz from last week or two weeks ago, actually. Um, and we're going to go over the answers a little bit. I've, I've recorded a little screen recording of that.
And then um, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to remind you about the Zoom meeting and the specifics about the Zoom meeting. And then we're going to do a little wrap up, a little wrap up where we where we talk about some things and um, get some things done and make sure you guys remember everything that I expect of you in the next week or two. OK, there's a couple of things some of you haven't turned in yet. I hope you do it because remember, your homework assignments is the best way that I can tell about if you're participating in this very strange semester where I can't interact with you very much. OK, well, like I said, this is not going to be a very fun lesson today. We're mostly just reviewing things. Uh, but I know in this class, some of you guys, we had done the joke before. Remember, we were talking about the, the joke. Some of you answered me and a few of you got it right. I think somebody said it's a dad joke, which is a really good expression. In English, we say a dad joke. We were talking about the two drunk men. And they asked if it was the sun or the moon. And he said, I don't know. I'm not from around here. Of course, he should know, even if he's not from that city, he should know that the sun and the moon are always the same, no matter what city you're in. But he's so drunk, he doesn't know what he's saying, right? So some of you got it. That was right. Very good. However, today is a different joke. I want you to tell me, maybe you can tell me in Zoom class. If you come to the Zoom class, you can tell me the answer to this joke. It says, two hunters. What's a hunter? You guys know what a hunter is? What is hunter in Korean? Right, a hunter is uh, somebody who uh, kills animals for food, right? They go out to the forest, they go out to the mountain, and they kill animals, right? I think in Korean it's called uh, sangyanggun, is that right? Uh, somebody who goes out and, and kills animals and you, you eat their meat or you, you take their fur or whatever, right? So two hunters are out in the woods and they, right, they get lost. What's lost? Kojo, right? Uh, like a gilchi is easy to get lost. So as the sun begins to set, it grows cold, very cold. So they think back on their training when they were training to be hunters. If you should get lost, you should stay, stay put, stay put, stay put means stay in the same spot and fire three shots in the air. Fire three shots shots near their hunters out in the woods and they should fire three times in the air if you get lost so some somebody can see you so they do this and they wait an hour the next hour they fire three more shots again and wait but still nobody comes why not they fired three shots twice but nobody came it gets colder on the third hour, one hunter says to the other, do you think help is coming soon? He responds, I hope so. I only have two arrows left. Huh? Huh? Do you get it? You understand? Ha ha ha. Well, uh, somebody might think this one is not funny or they don't get it. Or better yet, it's kind of a dad joke. Ajashi joke, right? But I found Ajashi jokes, they're often not funny, but they're like the easiest joke to get. They're one of the easiest jokes to understand if English is not your first language, right? Okay, so I just wanted to lighten things up again because this is going to be mostly review day of some points that we've already talked about. Okay, look at this guy. We have a midterm tomorrow. I better unwrap my book and read the syllabus in the morning. He doesn't care. But I know all of you guys who have taken intermediate English, you do care. You care about English and you care about studying. So if you do care, some information is uh, the midterm test is going to start April 23rd at 12 lunchtime and it's going to be available online until April 27th at 11.59 p.m. Okay, so you have a lot of time to take it. Uh, you have some time to study. 
If you haven't prepared, you can get prepared. Uh, I'm giving you guys, well, I'm going to give you 420 minutes. I think you don't need 120 minutes, but I'm going to give you 120 minutes just because I feel very generous. I'm feeling very generous to you. It's going to be 40 questions, 40 questions. Um, uh, very similar in style to previous, some multiple choice, some matching, some fill in the blanks. Nothing very surprising. I think not very hard. And again, you can reach it at our online portal, nomsolenglish.neolms.com, assignments, midterm test, and take now. Remember again that once you start the test, you must finish it. If you don't finish it, it's going to run out of time and the computer will give you an F, right? So please don't start it unless you're ready to finish it. If you have a problem and you can't, please uh, send me a message and we will fix that problem. Okay, send me a message and we will fix that problem. Okay, well, let's look at the review now. Let's look at our review and what we have to talk about today. We're going to review part one, the present continuous verbs or present progressive. So sometimes you see this called present continuous and sometimes present progressive. They mean the same thing. They mean the same thing. So don't get confused by it. But sometimes you might see either one. So when do we use present continuous verbs and why do we use them instead of the present simple? Good question. Why are there so many ways to talk about things that are happening now? Well, they're for actions that are happening like right now. Well, we want to talk about an action that's happening now or at this time and it's not finished yet. We use the present continuous tense. We can also use this tense when we want to make clear that the action is temporary. That it's going to finish sometime in the near future. Okay. So sorry, she can't come to her phone right now. She's having a bath, right? She's, she's in the bath right now. She can't come. Look, someone is trying to break into your car. They're trying right now. This work is good. Your handwriting is getting better and better. Uh, so in this case, the, the present is the present continuous is getting better, not handwriting. Handwriting in this case is a noun. So I'm wearing these old trousers to school this week as we're doing a pottery course and it's very messy. So wearing present continuous, I'm wearing them right now. I shall not be wearing them tomorrow, but right now I'm wearing them. Of course she likes you. You're just being stupid. She likes you. You're being stupid. You're acting stupid. Where's John? He's playing soccer in the sports hall right now. This calculator isn't working properly. Do you have another one? So right now it isn't working properly. It's broken. You can go outside now. It isn't raining anymore. So usually for these actions about weather, raining, snowing, they're, they're temporary actions. So that's a hint. If you see somebody talking about the weather, the verb is probably present continuous. And what are you doing? My watch is broken and I'm trying to fix it. So what are you doing right now? Well, why are you talking? You should be listening to me. So these are both present continuous, talking about something, a situation right now. All right, so take a minute and look these over, pause these, and make sure that you understand what each of these are talking about and how they meant to be talking about an action that's right now and that is temporary. Okay. OK, 
question. We also talk about them for future arrangements. Remember, for something that's going to happen in the future, we use the present progressive for things that have already been arranged. I'm meeting my mother at the airport tomorrow. Our grandmother is visiting us at Christmas. Sorry, I can't stay after school today. I'm playing tennis with Junshi. My mother's going to the dentist tomorrow. I'm not going home at Christmas, so I can come to your party after all. Are you doing anything on Sunday morning? Do you know if he's going to the dance with Maiko next week? So think about these, think about your future. What's an example of present progressive you might use to talk about your future? Well, we're going to be studying online probably the whole semester. We'll probably be canceling our summer plans. However, I've seen that some of you are going out. Some people are going out these days and having fun. Uh, a lot of people are visiting cafes, drinking alcohol with their friends. In fact, a lot of people are getting uh, a little bit maybe happy. They think COVID-19 is finished, right? So uh, I've seen some people going out. I hope that you guys are being careful when planning your future arrangements because I think the virus is not finished yet, right? In any case, although it's called present progressive, we can use it when we're talking about the future in these kinds of cases. You understand? We'll pause this and take a moment again to look at each of these sentences and make sure that you understand them completely. Okay. To express annoyance, we didn't talk about this before, but I wanted to, since you guys are intermediate level, I wanted to show you something that's a little bit more advanced about the nuance of, of English uh, of English expressions, right? Annoyance. What is annoying, right? Like chajingya, right? Something that's uh, irritating. It bothers you. You don't like it. It's an annoyance. So we can use the present progressive, present continuous, when we are talking about a situation that really annoys us or bothers us. Okay. How do we do that? Well, it's kind of nuanced. So usually it's used for repeated actions, like getting up early. He always gets up early. The present continuous is the correct choice when the speaker wants to express like annoyance at a repeated action, right? So we don't like this present simple. So we say, you're always interrupting me when I'm talking and I don't like it. She's always tapping her pencil on the desk and it's getting on my nerves, getting on my nerves, right? Charging not getting on my nerves. My ESL teacher is always giving detentions. How can anyone be so mean? What's a detention? Do you know detention? A detention is kind of punishment in American school where you have to stay late after school. I'm getting tired of you always coming late to class. I'm getting tired of you always coming late to class. Why is it always raining in Germany? Why is it always raining in Germany? Why are you always criticizing me? Why are you always criticizing me? What does criticize mean? Do you guys know criticize? Well, some people are very irritated about being criticized, right? But do you recognize what that word means? You guys are intermediate, right? Right? To criticize somebody, to, to pull out their weaknesses. Well, did you notice anything that is in common between these sentences? Something that is the same in all of these sentences? Well, you see the adverb there, always. This helps us to show that the action is happening all the time and it's really, really bothering us. 
it's really, really bothering us. Okay, so that's the third way. You know, I won't ask you too many questions about this, but again, I want you guys to be able to know this and use it in conversation. Hopefully, use it in conversation uh, when we do our Zoom class, if we have time. Okay, and don't forget about stative verbs. These are verbs uh, that usually don't go into progressive forms. They don't get to ing. You can look back at our previous PowerPoints from week three, where we talk about this, and I put a list of state of verbs. You can check them and review them before you take the test. They talk about things that are true and they usually don't change, like the sky is blue, a winter is cold. Okay, they talk about thoughts, right? Thoughts. Uh, I, I like, I like Thai food. It's a thought. Uh, possession. I have an iPhone. You have an apartment. You own it. So these don't usually don't get, we don't say you owning the apartment. Emotions. I love you. I think we used that example before. Body senses. Do you hear me? And other opinions. Um, uh, Korea is, is a great country. Or definitions. Uh, a, a computer is a tool for studying. So these are state of verbs. Okay. Again, generally, there are occasions when they can get an ing ending, but usually they don't. So on the test, I want you to be able to pull out the state of verbs. I want you to be able to pull out the state of verbs, possibly. There might be a few questions about this. Might be a few questions about this. Okay. So hopefully, if you look at that list of verbs, you can recognize a state of verb from a, from a non-state of verb. You'll be able to tell if it gets an ing or not. You should be able to tell if it gets an ing or not. Okay. Well, review part two is going to talk about irregular verbs. Now, I put why did I put this person here looking very upset? Well, because in my experience, Irregular verbs are a very difficult time for non-native speakers of English to understand. Korea doesn't have exactly these kind of irregular verbs as much, but they're common in European languages, and I think they're very, very common in English. So if you want to use the simple past correctly, which will be on the test, then you'll need to understand irregular verbs if you want to put them in the past tense. You can follow this link and it's going to take you to a list of some of the most common, some of the most common irregular verbs in English. Okay. Just, just for your own help. Not all of those are going to be on the test, but just for your ability to understand better. Okay. Your ability to communicate better, but they're not all going to be on the test. Okay, so here's the most common irregular verbs in English. So that's the first column is the core verb. The second column is the past simple. And the third column is the past participle used with a helping verb have, has, had. Okay, so say, said, has said, make, made, has made, go, went, has gone, take, took, has taken, come, came, has come, see, saw, has seen, know, knew, has known, get, got, in British English, has got, in American English, has gotten. So that's a small difference, but you may need to know that sometime in the future. Give, gave, has given, find, found, has found, think, thought, has thought, tell, told, has told, become, became, has become, show, 
showed, has shown, leave, left, has left, feel, felt, has felt, put, put, has put, bring, brought, has brought, begin, began, has begun, keep, kept, has kept. Now, why would I list all of those there? Why would I take the time to say all of those? Well, because in English, these are the 20 most common irregular verbs. So you're going to be seeing them quite often. And hint, you may be seeing many of these on our midterm and final test. And if we are able to give a presentation, I'm hoping that you're going to use these correctly use these correctly okay uh, another part that we're going to do that I wanted to review was agreements and disagreement so so do I neither do I so am I and neither am I so we're going to agree or disagree with this statement using one of these so my coffee isn't hot enough. So let's say I want to agree with that. What would I say? Well, you would say, neither is mine. Neither is mine. Okay, use that verb plus the possessive pronoun at the end. Tom didn't play chess very well. Tom didn't play chess very well. So we're going to say the others, other people. You would say, neither did the others. Neither did the others. Sue speaks French fluently. Sue speaks French fluently. And here we are talking about somebody named Joe. Well, so does Joe. What does Joe do? He speaks French fluently. So, so does Joe. I have never been to America. And we're talking about Jim here, not ourself. So instead of saying neither have I, you might say neither has Jim. We're using the past participle there, right? Have never been. I'm not going on a holiday this summer. I'm not going on holiday this summer. You would say, talking about yourself, neither am I. And I guess this semester, many people are not going on a holiday this summer because they might still be worrying about the virus at that time. Review three, the pronunciation of past simple verbs. So remember we talked about last week, past simple verbs. Verbs that are pronounced differently in English depending on the sound of the final consonant in the root of the word. So we have three different categories of pronunciation. The first two are between unvoiced and voiced consonants. The unvoiced consonants p, f, s, sh, ch, k. In this case, the end of it is pronounced t, as we said last week. Hoped, laughed, faxed, washed, watched, and liked. And then we have voice consonants. So these are every other kind of consonant sound. Play, played, allow, allowed, beg, begged. Again, I know we talked about this last week, but in my experience, it's a little bit hard to remember why these make this sound. So, uh, and these are definitely, definitely going to be on 
your midterm test. So I want you to remember them and you'll be asked to sort some of them out and show what sound they make on the test, on the midterm test, okay? So these are the ones you can kind of make mistakes on them when you speak and we can still understand you. Um, however, somebody who's rising through intermediate level English, I think that they're going to need to understand these more completely and be able to pronounce them correctly. However, the most important one that you understand is the words that end in unvoiced T or voiced D because these ones get ed at the end, wanted, ended. So they have an extra syllable. It's important to remember that the other ones do not get an extra syllable. So we never say washed. Right? We never say watch it. We never say challenge it. Only if the root word ends in T or D does it get an extra syllable ed at the end. I know we talked about it last week again, but I just want to go over it again so you remember it. Okay. Well, part four of review is going to be the present perfect. We also discussed it last week. So present perfect is when we talk about well, several different situations that we use the present perfect with. How do we use it? Well, uh, we use it when for unfinished things. Okay. We use it for unfinished things. So how long something is how long something has existed. So I've known Karen since 1994. She's lived in London for three years. So you can use it with different words like since 2010, since July, for 10 years, for three days. So um, we've studied English for about two months, right? We've studied English for about two months or about a month. Okay. So only when we're talking about how long something happens. So that's the one form when an action is unfinished. We use the present perfect simple or present perfect. Okay. There are many forms of present perfect. This is actually the present perfect simple. Right now, we're just going to do that because this is kind of start, starts to you when English grammar gets a little bit more complex. So we can use it also for actions that are not finished or finished. Okay. So for an unfinished time word, I haven't seen her this month. I haven't seen her this month. Okay. Um, I haven't eaten today. Okay. Uh, as a present result, I've, I've lost my keys so I can get into my house. I've broken my phone so I can't call you. I have broken my phone. For news or recent events, the Queen has given a speech. Uh, President Moon Jae-in has met his advisors. Or for life's experience, I've been to Tokyo, or I've never been to Tokyo. I've been to Mongolia. I've been married three times. No, I have not been married three times, but just an example. I've never been married. I have never been married. Again, that's another present perfect. Present perfect. Okay. So I want you guys to be able to use these and discern these on the test. We talked about it last week and we did some exercises in the book with it last week. So I'm thinking nowadays you guys are experts about the present perfect, right? You're all expert about this. Okay, so what I want you guys to do now is uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to check all of your quiz. We're going to check your quiz. Okay, so here are our uh, tests. Uh, we can go over this right now. Hopefully you can see this quite well inside of the PowerPoint. So the first question is a multiple choice question. Uh, so it only had one answer. It's uh, very simple. Ji Hyun loves dogs and cats. So as you know already, that is the simple present of uh, of your um, 
verb. Okay, let's try the next one. My uncle smokes one or two cigarettes a day. Again, simple present. Conjugate for the uh, third person, my uncle, you get smokes. That's also worth two points. Actually, my uncle is smoking a cigarette right now. So we're talking about an action that's happening right now at this very moment. Therefore, uh, it's going to get the present progressive or present continuous form of the verb, be verb, plus ing. If you got that right, you get two points. The next one here is, um, is Lisa swimming in the lake right now? Again, it's present continuous, but we're making it into a question. We're making it into a question. Therefore, we have to reverse the verb and the noun, right? Okay. Again, another question with present continuous. Is he visiting a museum tonight? Okay, you're supposed to reply with agreement here. I hate soft drinks and Coca-Cola. So you're going to use the do verb, so do I. Not so am I, because we're not showing a state of being here, but instead we're showing uh, something you do, you hate. I'm not going to work tomorrow. Something you do here, so neither am I. I think I'm going to stay home tonight. So will I. Future. Future. Um, I think for you guys, I gave you a point if you said, so am I. It's not as good of an answer as so will I, but it, it does fit. So if you got that right, um, if, you, if you wrote so am I, I gave you a point. If I did not give you a point, please remind you, remind me and I will give you a point, okay? Uh, I'm uh, I'm taking a Spanish class this year. It starts at 7:30. So taking, you're going to get a present progressive verb, something that's ha continuously happening now. However, something like starts, uh, we're usually going. It's going to be a state of verb in this case, right? So it's not starting at 7:30. Okay, just it always starts at 7:30. Okay, Yuko doesn't eat meat. She doesn't like it. Both of those are just going to be uh, state of verbs. Something that's always not true. Always true, like the sky is blue. The sky is not purple. Okay. Uh, to be a good writer, you need to use your imagination okay this was some of the vocabulary some of these might be on your test as well telling the difference between making something into a noun and making it into an adjective with the same root word Einstein and Edison were known for their intelligence you're going to use the adjective form Hyongyongsa and not the noun After class is finished, I'm always very energetic. Again, the adjective form. It's uh, modifying a noun. Therefore, you use, the, you use the adjective. And so from the uh, past simple of this verb, uh, the past simple, it's an irregular verb of speak, is spoke. Uh, teach, of course, is taught, T-A-U-G-H-T. The past of read is also R-E-A-D, but we pronounce it read. It's kind of one of those complicated parts of English, I know. Spend, the past tense, a regular verb is spent. The past of Neil, I allowed you two answers here. You should have chosen both. 
knelt and kneeled are both acceptable. I usually say knelt in American English, but some people say kneeled. It's technically correct. Okay. Um, the past of burn is similar. It can also be burned or burnt. Arise is only arose. It's kind of a difficult one. Become is became. You guys probably know that. All right. So that was 21 questions for the whole test. 21 questions for the whole test. Most of you did okay. Some people had a few problems. It's going to be not too different from the uh, from the midterm test, from the midterm test as well. Okay, so I know that's a little bit boring to go through there, but I know many students are very curious about what their score was on the test. Okay, if you have any other questions, guys, ask me in the, in the, in the Zoom class, okay, or send me an email. Okay, so here are our uh, tests.
Okay, uh, I wanted to remind you guys about the Zoom Zoom class schedule. So you guys, um, Monday class is going to be 11 to 12.30, Tuesday class 9 to 10.30, and Thursday class 2 to 3.30. Okay, it's not mandatory to join the Zoom class. It's not absolutely mandatory, but I would... Uh, I hope that you do take the time to join the Zoom class uh, if you can. I hope you take the chance to take the time, join the Zoom class, and we can talk to each other and get to know each other. I know some of you have told me that you are interested in it, so I hope that you can join. We can talk, you know, I don't have a subscription to Zoom, so we'll probably do 40 minutes and then we'll stop. And then if it's working well and we can we can do it more, then we will log out and we will we'll come in again and we can talk for another 40 minutes. OK, I didn't subscribe to Zoom yet and pay the money because I don't know if it works. I don't know if it works. And Namsal University, they haven't really given me permission to do it, but I want to do it because I think, well, we're in the intermediate conversation, right? We're here and you guys want to talk. So please, if you have not tried Zoom, try it soon, okay? Make your account. You don't have to join, but remember again, also I'm gonna be able to judge your speaking and your participation better if we're in the class, right? One of our classes has like a lot of people, like a 40 people, but that's okay. We have to try to do it. Um, I guess probably 40 people are not gonna show up but we can have up to 100 people in the Zoom class. We can have up to 100 people, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. I, I included this because many students are asking me about Zoom. They're saying, uh, Professor, do we have to, you know, do we have to show our face on the camera? Well, you don't have to show your face, but I'm going to show my face. And so some people want to use only audio. They say they don't have a camera. Well, you can use Zoom with your phone. I'm not going to force you to do it. Um, I know especially some of the ladies are very sensitive about how they look. And a lot of the guys are sensitive to, um, you know, communication is better face to face. Communication is better face to face, right? So that's part of the reason why we're having Zoom. So do your makeup or whatever for the Zoom class. It's going to be just like, it's just going to be like having normal class, I hope, for 40 minutes or for 80 minutes. Okay. So this is the address. You'll need that meeting ID. If you don't remember how to do it, log back into the, uh, the other video from last week. It explains how to do Zoom. Okay. It explains where you need to go, and I try to explain everything perfectly on how to do it. I'm not an expert about Zoom. I don't know the system very well, so we're just trying together, just trying, trying something new, trying to really have a conversation class, right? We're trying to really have a conversation class. Maybe it's going to be really easy and fun, or maybe it's going to be terrible, but that's okay. We tried, right? All we're doing is trying a bit. So um, don't forget, I, I asked you guys to prepare like a homework assignment about music. I want to do that. I don't know if we're going to have time. You can prepare it. If you don't, if you don't do it, if we don't have time to do it or we can't get the technology working, that's OK. We'll talk about it another time or I'll have you guys email it to me or something. But for right now, think about the music homework, your favorite music. If we can, we're going to talk about that, okay? And maybe we can get some audio working. I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but hopefully we're going to get it working. Okay. Wrap up. Don't forget, please, please turn in your profile. Some students have not turned in their profile yet. Uh, we were supposed to do it a few weeks ago. I said, please do it by April 30th. 
Um, remember, you have to log in, go to it, download the profile document. Some students are sending me just some information in the email. Uh, it's a little bit hard to keep track of. I'm not sure what it is. No, please, I want you to turn in your profile. It's in Guajemul, listed under assignments on our class website. If you're watching the videos every week, you should see it. Um, so I know it's a little bit hard to keep up with, but you know we don't have a lot of chances for discussion, right? We don't have a lot of chances. So this is how I know you're taking part in the class. You're doing the class assignments, you're paying attention, is if you turn in these. So this is your participation assignment. Don't forget to take the midterm. Right. Don't forget to take the midterm. Don't forget to, uh, um, you know, study for the midterm. Log in once you open the midterm that you complete it. OK, it's not too difficult. If you're listening to the lectures, it shouldn't be very hard. And don't forget to register for Zoom and to come to class, hopefully with your music homework, hopefully with your music homework so we can all get together. We can get to know each other, even our class with 40 students. I don't know how it's going to work yet, but I like to try new things. Don't you? OK. OK, guys. Well, um, that's all. If you have any questions, please send me an email. Uh, please send me a cacao message. I'm looking forward to seeing you Zoom class if you come. You don't have to come, but if you come, I'm looking forward to talking to you. OK. All right, guys. Well, take care of your health. Uh, good luck on the midterm, and I will see you in a few, well, in a few days or today. I'm not sure when you're listening to this video. Okay, fighting!